Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the C-Man, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down. So, you guys are well aware that I, I put up a lot of content, specifically on the television side, um, that I record myself. Uh, I've been doing it for the boys all season. Um, I started doing it for Lovecraft Country. I have to get caught up on Lovecraft Country, and we'll continue to do it. Um, I always do it for American Horror Story. And I love doing it. I love being able to put my reactions into the reviews. Um, people seem to really dig that. And those shows in particular really lend themselves to reactions. But a bunch of times I don't want to always have the camera on when I'm watching television. And I got home like a week or so ago from work and I was just shot. And I was like, I need to veg out, crack a beer, turn on something and just binge a little while. And I threw on HBO Max, um, which unfortunate as it is that it's as expensive as it is um, and not a lot of people have gone to it it's even more unfortunate because the content on there is really good like the content they've acquired and that they own really great properties but the original content that at least i've watched so far has been really really good i love seth rogan's and american pickle even though it was very very simple that was great um i really dug this uh six episode mini series crime drama um based on the tr a true story uh the murders at the white house farms i think i'll be doing a review for that but spectacular and then this show is maybe some of the best sci-fi i've seen in the last five ten years so i'm not trying to get you to go spend like 15 bucks a month on a streaming service but i know a lot of people aren't seeing this show because they don't have hbo max and it's a shame because this show is mind-blowingly good and if you have max it's a must watch and it's oh it's so good so why don't you pull up a chair man take a seat we're getting ready to dive in spoiler free into raised by wolves and one of my favorite elements of raised by wolves is the fact that ridley scott is involved and is involved in a way where from concept to production design to writing and direction the look and feel of the show feel like Ridley's all over it. And even the storyline involves this major conflict between this group of religious people and this group of atheists. And Ridley himself in 2016 came out and said he was an atheist. And a year later, he was interviewed, I think, by the BBC. And he said he wasn't so sure. And this whole show feels like it was written by a dude who's having that exact conflict. Um, and it, it really lends itself well to the show, like the conflict between the religious and the atheists and what that means from a personal standpoint as far as like what's being talked about and what it means to the actual story works so well. Um, I just sat there. I was like, I think Ridley created this whole thing. Like I knew he wrote a couple episodes. I knew he directed the first two episodes. I knew he EP'd it. But I was like, I think he might have been the creator. He's not. Humongous shout out to Aaron Gazakowski, who uh, created the show. And wanted to get Ridley involved. And Ridley, I've read an interview with the two of them recently, um, where Ridley was like, I was nervous. I didn't want to jump in right away because it involves androids and space and stuff that Ridley's done in the past. And Ridley's like, I don't really like to go backwards unless I'm going back to those specific properties. Um, you know, outside of the alien universe, he really hasn't dived into something you know he tries to do different elements of sci-fi so he didn't want to do something that he knew people would immediately go oh this is just like alien or specifically prometheus uh, for me this show if you were a fan of ridley scott i think is a combination of prometheus uh meets the martian with less humor um there is some humor in the show and it's subtle and not always funny which makes it really funny um but for the most part like the, the humor that you get in the martian if you suck that out and had more of a tone of prometheus the combination of those two movies, I think, is what we get on screen here. And it's wonderful. But Ridley said he read the pilot and he was just immediately in. And what Guzikowski created was something that was perfect for Ridley Scott. And having him be involved was perfect for this show. And I think is one of the reasons that the show pops as much as it does. Um, and the other thing uh, that they talk about in that interview is the fact that, spoilers, the androids that are in this show uh, have white blood, but originally it was written as black blood. And Ridley went to Guzikowski and was like, why, why black blood, though? And Guzikowski basically said, I didn't want to just blatantly rip you off. And Ridley was like, oh, okay, I'm glad that's the reason, because we're going to make it white blood. And 
I believe it's actually it's referred to as milk um, in the show, but one of those things where having Ridley really benefits the show because I understand where Guzikowski is coming from. You don't want to rip off, you know, or seem like you're ripping off Ridley Scott. But white blood for androids just works, and I mean we've seen it with with other android properties, things like Westworld that Ridley's not you know involved in, and it just works from a visual standpoint. It makes it creepy in the best way for androids. So I was so glad that Ridley got in because that change happens. And Ridley is clearly all over this show, even if he wasn't the creator, uh, specifically from production design. I mean, the color paletting is very um, dull and, and kind of colorless. Um, and I know there were some points about that. I think it fits perfectly though for the show and specifically for the season. Um, and Gozakowski said that the, the planet they're on has different landscapes and this was kind of more of a cold wintery type area you know they've mentioned in the show like an area that seems more tropical so you can see changes in that but aside from just the color paletting the look of the world i think is brilliant um or at least the landscape for this season the design when it comes to the group of religious folks when it comes to this new civilization that's trying to be built and when it comes to the androids and some of the other stuff in the show, it's just, it's very Ridley Scott, but it works so well. And it's like little twists and variations on things that we've seen before. Um, there are some creatures that pop up that like have a very strong Ridley influence on, but in a slightly different way than we've seen before. And I thought they were pretty dope looking. And where the story goes with that group, really interesting stuff by the time we get to the finale. The finale in this show... One of the best finales I've seen probably all year in the last couple of years as far as TV goes. Um, it does some insane things, and it's absolutely genius. Um, but, yeah, the look and the feel of those creatures and what those creatures are as we kind of learn those things, awesome stuff. And the androids, I just, I love, I just love the conflict between the atheists and the androids and where they come from and what they're all about and, and this group of religious uh, followers of soul. Um, it, it just, it's very compelling and it fits what's going on. And for those unfamiliar, um, Earth is on its way out and there are these two groups of people, the atheists and, and the, you know, the followers of soul. And the followers of soul are the people who are mostly in control, have means and money, and they build multiple arcs to send all of their people to this other uh, planet where they'll rebuild. It's got similar uh, features as, as Earth and, and makes it habit inhabitable for people. The atheists don't have that type of money and resources, so they build a smaller, faster, more efficient ship that can only house two androids and 12 embryos. Uh, and the, the androids are built in a way to help bring the embryos to term, and then the idea is to recolonize and bring their civilization to life that way. Um, and the show follows uh, these two androids, mother and father, um, played by Amanda Collin and uh, Abu Bakar Salim. Wow, first and foremost, man. Uh, these two, I've never seen anywhere before. Um, they've both done um, a moderate amount of acting prior to this, but this is the first thing that I've ever seen. I think anything that they've been in is this big. Um, and they are absolutely brilliant. The thing with this show, besides the writing and the production design and the direction, all of which I think will get nominated for Emmys, this show is going to get tons of Emmy nominations. But I think it is a lock to get nominated in all four major acting categories. And I think it's pretty much a lock that you could say at least one of these four actors will win something. Um, Amanda Collin is just tremendous. Um, the whole concept behind Mother and the androids in general was to, you know, kind of have an androgynous look to them. And Amanda Collin fits that mold perfectly. And they gave her this, you know, short red hair, which just pops, especially in a very dull, palleted type of a show. Her hair really pops. Um, and her performance is one of the best performances I've seen all year. TV, movies, it does not matter. The way in which she nails the idea of this android, it's perfect execution, and the androids in the show and the way that they're built have to raise children, right, and build a colony. And that kind of has some of their programming 
make it seem like they have emotions. And a lot of these androids type shows and movies have dealt with that type of thing, right? Like, do android can androids evolve to actually feel emotion? Um, or are they just programmed that way? And the way both Colin and Salim deliver that type of material is genius, man. Their movements and, and the way they can go from like making you forget that they're an android to remembering that they're an android instantaneously is just awesome. The relationship between the two of them and what it, it means. The show kind of makes a jump after like 12 years. So like they land, you see all that stuff happen, it jumps 12 years so you can have kids and see what they're doing as far as raising them. Um, and it's fascinating to watch them work through things. Father is, you know, not as powerful of an android as mother is as far as his processing. Um, but he has this thing where he wants to understand humor. So he's always trying to tell jokes. That's the little bit of humor that's in the show. And it doesn't work a lot of the time, which ends up kind of being funny on its own. But the way Slim delivers that stuff and delivers, you know, the same thing as Colin, those emotional android moments where, like, you kind of forget. Um, it's just wonderful to watch both of them and the story for the two of them. Their arc is wonderful in all the places it takes these two machines that are so human. Like, the places they go are so human to their story, but it's about two machines. Um, and I'm telling you, like, you, you get to the end of this series, the show, and you're just like, nothing should ever happen to these two. Because I love them as far as characters go, and I love watching Colin and Salim on screen acting and doing things. They're so, so tremendous. And I think... Um, Amanda Collin has a real good shot at winning Best Actress at the Emmys. And I think uh, Abu Bakar uh, Salim could have a real good shot at winning the Supporting Actor. He's not the, the lead here. The lead uh, belongs to Travis Stimmel, who, of course, is from Vikings. Um, if you haven't checked that show out, really, really good stuff. And he was the only actor in this entire cast list that I recognized from anything. Um, he's tremendous. He plays a character named Marcus. He has a wife named Sue, played by uh, Neon Algar. And they are phenomenal as well. Um, kind of the polar, the opposite to uh, lead actors in those two categories. Um, you know, you have mother and father, and then you have Marcus and Sue. Marcus and Sue are a pair of atheists um, who are trying to escape Earth and end up impersonating uh, some of the followers of Soul to get onto an arc. And then the story from there, I don't want to spoil nothing, but it takes... Marcus and Sue to some really, really interesting places. And I loved their performances. I think Fimmel's got a really good shot um, at lead actor. Um, his journey is kind of a transformational journey. So you see him physically progress across the show. And where he goes and the kind of spiral that he's in um, is fascinating and just wonderful to watch on screen. Like, he pops so much and i'm like so i'm as i'm as intrigued with his story as i am with mother and fathers um and i think neon algar has a really good shot to be nominated for uh supporting uh female lead because um she is wonderful um she's like one of the only people uh in this whole situation that has like medical backgrounds so her character kind of has very important moments um and her and marcus both have these moments that kind of really pull them into this group of people and elevate them to spots where people trust them, um, even though they're impersonators. And um, it, it's just really, really interesting. And the other cool the duality to these two sets of characters is the fact that both sets have been responsible for raising uh, a child or a few. Um, you know, mother and father have this whole colony and, you know, uh, Marcus and Sue learn that the people they've impersonated have a son. And that son, very reflective, kind of oppositely reflective of the, the son that mother and father um, think the highest of in Campion, who's played by Winter McGrath. And uh, Paul is played by Felix Jameson, who's Marcus and Sue's son. And Jameson and uh, McGrath, in their own right, <laughs> could be nominated for awards. They're really, really good. But they're two characters that are called, kind of also mirrored. Uh, and, and they have a closer relationship because of things that go on in, in the story, as well as another group of uh, kids from uh, the Followers of Soul. There's just some kind of stuff that goes down that kind of forces all these people together. And all the performances from everybody you get in the, the, the show are just tremendous, from the kids to the adults. Um, but those 
six in particular, Colin, Salim, McGrath, Fimmel, Algar, and Jamison. They pop the most, and their stories are the most intricately weaved. Um, and kind of the stories that kind of push the show forward. And just where it goes as far as it, it, it's concerned from the religious side, I think, is a really interesting conversation. Um, and mixing in that with all of these sci-fi elements and, you know, a mixture of horror and suspense um, that just really creates a very interesting world. And because most of the actors are people you don't know, and so many of them are as striking as Colin or as McGrath or as Slim, I mean, everyone that's on screen that you're not familiar with, they pop on screen and the acting performances just across the board are so good that it pulls you into a, a, a show even more because the story gets you hooked and the actors make you stay. But as much as all that stuff works, this planet in and of itself is a character that I am very interested in. And a lot of your sci-fi stuff that's kind of more away from the human elements, more towards some of the elements that we don't know exist within the planet. And the planet itself has a story and it has a past. And we are only scratching the surface of that past in this season. And that's, I think, something that's going to really get dived into come season two. And it's some of the stuff that I'm most fascinated with and has the ability to create some of the best sci-fi moments. And Mother's character, I think, has the best understanding of all of this stuff. And we get the most information as far as backstory on her character. The way they develop her character and show us things from the past and what's currently going on and where she comes from. Um, and like what a necromancer is, which is the type of android that she is. Um, where she comes from versus what she has become. She's different than what she used to be. And all that mixes together. It's tremendous stuff. It's why I think Colin is going to have a really good shot at the Emmy because it's the character that's most intriguing and best done in the show. Um, and she has the strongest ties to the sci-fi elements of things, specifically with the planet. And I can't wait, dude, because the finale... Woo, man! <laughs> there is... I, never in a million years do you see coming what, what comes. And wow! And when you can do that... And you got something special on your hands. This, the way I said, I think uh, Lovecraft Country um, has the ability to become like a Game of Thrones for horror fans. Raised by Wolves is going to be the Game of Thrones for sci-fi fans. Um, it's, it has the potential to be that kind of a show where if people get in, come around to HBO Max, start watching it, you're going to have a sci-fi community that is craving this stuff non-stop so absolutely uh tremendous stuff uh from raised by wolves you know and just a big big round of applause uh to ridley scott and aaron gazkowski um gazkowski came up with something that meshed so well with ridley and getting ridley in on it really helped i think bring this to what it was meant to be and is something that i think is really really special uh in the world of television and in the world of sci-fi so i'm a huge fan of raised by wolves i think this is a must watch for sci-fi fans it is a must watch for hbo max subscribers and it's a must watch for ridley scott fans and like i said i think this is prometheus meets the martian minus a little bit of humor <laughs> It is really, really, really good. Um, so you go, man. Those are all my non-spoiler thoughts on Raised by Wolves. And there's... I only barely scratched the surface on this show, man. Like I said, it's got a massive cast. Everybody that shows up is really, really good and intriguing. But specifically, those six characters that we talked about, I, their storylines, I think, are the most interesting. Um, and certainly the ones that you're supposed to latch on to the most. So... Huge bucket of win for HBO Max, I think, with Raised by Wolves. Now, I want to know what you're thinking. Uh, if you have HBO Max and have had a chance to watch Raised by Wolves, where does this fall for you in the world of sci-fi, in the world of Ridley Scott? How well do you think it meshed with Ridley Scott's um, you know, uh, abilities and the things that he can bring to it? Um, do you think that it was good that it landed with Ridley and that he was involved with the production and the design? Uh, did the colorless type palette 
bother you or, or, or not? Um, what was, you know, your favorite element sci-fi wise? Who were your favorite characters? What popped? Um, what were the things that were working or not working for you with Raised by Wolves? And if you uh, haven't watched it, uh, have we enticed you to want to watch it? I hope so. Um, I, like I said, it's a really good watch. And if you don't have HBO Max, is this the type of thing that could be the thing that makes you go, I'm going to go get HBO Max because I'm a huge sci-fi fan and that sounds amazing. Um, or are you waiting for something like the Friends reunion? Uh, anything you're thinking about Raised by Wolves, HBO Max, anything we've been talking about down below in the comments section. I look forward to talking to you down there. As always, if you enjoyed this uh, video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the C-Man and the rest of the C-Maniacs, show a little love, support you haven't yet, jump over there, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell if you want those alerts, and until next time for the C-Man Cinema Sit Down. I've been the C-Man, I'm signing off. Peace! Well, I'll be, you guys are still here, you must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry, C-Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy, and if you haven't yet, and you want to come check out all the C-Man goodies, Join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.